it's snowing. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> I know. Hello from Fairbanks, Alaska. And you know, a lot of us from lower 48 don't even consider of traveling to Alaska in winter. It feels so cold and dark and like a different dimension. But some of the most world's rarest and out of this world beautiful things you can see and experience in Alaska in winter. And here we are and I want to show you. So come along with me. I have always wondered how and why people originally moved to Alaska. Humans have been here in North America for at least 16,000 years. The latest theory is that before 10,000 BC, Stone Age people moved into Alaska through Bering Land Bridge that at the time was between Asia and North America. So only in 18th century, Russians reached Alaska and claimed it. And at the time, Russia had a huge financial problem and natives were fighting them hard and they were not really getting much out of Alaska. So they sold it to United States famously for $7 million. And in today's money, that's uh, about $133 million. Still pretty good. <laughs> And in 1867, I believe on October 18th, they raised American flag over Alaska and that became um, known as Alaskan Day. Life in Fairbanks in winter is pretty chill. There's nowhere to rush and if you rush, you'll slip and crash. So days are short and slow here. But there's something magical about immersing yourself in that slow winter mode. You have no choice but to stay present, appreciate the little things, and experience some incredible winter wonders. It is definitely not your typical winter getaway. It is adventure to remember. In winter, actually, sun never really rises all the way up. It kind of goes horizontally and then eventually fades away. Right now, it's, sun is right here and it's already, it's noon and it is February right now so sun rises around uh, 10 a.m. and uh, sunsets is around 4 p.m. We only stayed in Fairbanks for three days but I really wish we stayed for three weeks. There's tons of amazing things you can do in Fairbanks in winter. You can go aurora chasing, you can soak in a hot springs under aurora lit sky, you can go dog sledding or ice fishing or glacier walking and go to museums and restaurants. And your senses of feeling present are so enhanced. You're cut off from the world's hustle here. It is extraordinary. One of the cutest highlights of the trip was visiting a family-owned running reindeer ranch. Reindeer are basically semi-domesticated subspecies of deers, and they need to be cared for and walked like dogs. So we're basically here walking reindeers in this beautiful winter wonderland forest. Reindeer reside only in cold climates as they have 2,000 hair per square inch of coat. Also, reindeer are the only species of deer in which both the females and males carry antlers, most likely because they lose and regrow the antlers every year, but at different times of the year, male in fall and female in spring. Males use their antlers to attract the females, and females use them to find and defend their food source, especially in winter, when males can't. Who knew? We need to go home now. We have some heavy-duty uh, clothes fitting for Aurora viewing, so we've got to go. Okay, we must talk logistics. They really are the key to enjoying the trip instead of being absolutely miserable. Two things you have to pay attention to. Getting an appropriate car if you're renting one and getting the right clothes. We rented a car here. Technically you don't have to if you're living in a hotel and just ordering tours. And then every tour is, they're gonna come in, pick you up and, and take you and drop you back off, right? But if you're doing your own thing, we're rented Airbnb, so we're living in a house in a residential community, and then we're also rented a car, but there's a way to handle car here. <coughs> Excuse me. It's so cold. 
you've got to have winter tires. During December, it was a lot of snow and then God knows how, but it rained. So they have like a thick ice everywhere. It still hasn't melted on the main road. So the tires are a must. The keep your engine insulated is a must. And butt warmers are a must. <laughs> I'm, I'm from California and I need butt warmers in California, never mind here. One other thing, your car must be all-wheel drive. It is mind-boggling to me that some rental companies here don't make their cars winter safe, so pay attention. Chains won't do here. When it comes to clothes, your typical winter clothes is good enough to run in and out of car. And here I got snobbish on day two pumping gas, but don't be fooled. For longer walks and hikes or outdoor tours, you have to rent special clothing. We used Alaska Element Company. They came to our home, brought everything we needed, fitted, and we were set. Made a night and day difference with my usual winter jacket and boots. The link is in the description. Dog sledding is probably one of the most authentic Alaskan experiences. People rode dogs here for thousands of years. Even today, during storms, dogs may be the only ride to the city. Now we are off to meet Nita Ray, and she runs uh, Serious Sled Dogs, and it's a non-profit organization, so she basically rescues these dogs, and she trains them, and she takes care of them, and then of course she rides them. There's an incredible bond that develops between humans and dogs during that process of caring for dogs, training, and riding. There's no reins or leashes, so it takes an astounding amount of trust and partnership between humans and dogs. As a musher, you need to give the right jobs to the right dogs. And some jobs need more talent than others, and some dogs have more talent than others. We had a long conversation where Nita explains how it works, and I posted it in a separate video about dog mushing. But here are the basics. Closest to the sled are wheel dogs. They are responsible to pull and steer and are especially important during curves so they keep sled on the trail and not smashing you into the tree and run a straight line behind the leaders. Then there's team dogs. These guys got lots of energy and just love going along and following the leaders. And at the front of the line are the leaders. They are smart, have ambitions, and want more responsibility. They have to listen to the musher's voice commands. It is an incredible partnership. There's no reins, and they don't speak each other's language, so the musher and the dogs are intuitively connected, and that is just so beautiful. Four hundred years ago, in 1619, the Italian astronomer Galileo observed some shimmering bands of color in a dark sky at high altitude. He called it Aurora Borealis. Aurora is a goddess of dawn who was in charge of announcing daybreak by crossing the sky in her chariot, and Boreas is a god of north wind and winter. The most incredible thing about Fairbanks one-off is that it's located very close to uh, Arctic Circle, it's about 120 miles away. And as you know, on the surface of sun, there's a flares happens because of the activity. And three days later, it reaches the Earth and because of magnetic field, it goes all around and the flares go all around. And in North Pole and South Pole, in those areas, you actually get to see it. And that's how you see Northern Lights here in Fairbanks. That's why it's called uh, Aurora, capital of USA. And unfortunately, <laughs> Mother Nature had a little bit different plans because we planned that we we're going to be going. It was a high sun activity two days ago, but nature had different plans for us and it ended up being so cloudy we could not see it. So instead, we had extra time to come to China Hot Springs and that's where we are right now. So 
if it's Blue Lagoon too far away for you, this is the place because it's totally reachable. So China Hot Springs, uh, they have this, of course, natural pool. And look at this. It's snow right here. Incredible. And they have different lights here, so it feels like we're in the middle of northern <laughs> Hey, why not? I'll take that. And here's your tip of the day. The best time to come to China Hot Springs is at night. Right now, it's about 10 degrees. <laughs> I'm such a snob after three days. Like, three days ago, it was negative 27. Now it's 10 degrees. I feel like, oh, it's just 10 degrees. And it's snowing. And we're right here, and it's like so warm and amazing. And my, oh, my hair, it's frozen. Oh my God, even with all the steam, look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> we got to China Hot Springs at night, just to soak in the hot springs. So I don't have the video, but China Hot Springs Resort is a fun place and definitely worth checking out. The final stop of the trip is Santa Village in North Pole, Alaska. You can meet Santa here all year round. Just check his visit hours. I link the website in the description. Here you can request Santa's personalized letters for kids and adults, believers and atheists and even your pets. You can also get a square inch of North this? Pole. This is here. a deed. Uh huh. It says to one square inch of North ah. Pole land in Alaska. It is a funny. I'm gonna spend here all my money right now. This is insane. For sure, you can't help but stock up on toys, some of which are made locally, but a lot of them, surprisingly, are made in China. So keep that in mind. Well, this is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I, Alaska is just absolutely a special place. And as cold as it is, it's got my heart. And um, please like the video if you liked it and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Here's my handle and please subscribe for my newsletter. I upload videos every Sunday and I travel to different states of the United States and explore life and culture and nature of each destination and share my experiences with you. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.